Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is going to be an unboxing and quick impressions of GBD's newest device, the P2 Max. Now before we get into this and open up this really handsome box, look at this, look at this design that they have. They, it's fun watching GBD iterate through even just box design. Uh, however, let us go quickly and do a little uh, history lesson. So this is the GBD's first pocket. This is the pocket one. And this, uh, I, I was gonna say is, was pretty popular. A lot of people were really happy with this. This was um, pretty much the marriage between a UMBC and a MacBook-like device. And a lot of people really liked it. Now, for me, I think it, it solved uh, some things that people were looking for, but largely it was trying to do too much, especially in the keyboard area. This whole entire area is just way too cramped and too busy. This side is fine, but there's just a lot going on. This touch uh, stylus, the little nub right here, it worked fine enough, and I'm sure a lot of people were happy with it. But for me, it just wasn't something that I was very happy with, especially with the keyboard part of it. If you think about a small device that had a full-size keyboard, I, to me, it was not a success. Enter GBD's Pocket 2. Now, GBD's Pocket 2 fixes all of the keyboard issues on the Pocket 1 and has everything here. But then the mouse issue part of it was what initially they wanted to just do as a touchscreen, but uh, during the 11th hour and a lot of fan backlash, GBD put in this little optical mouse sensor, which actually does really well. Also, you can, uh, what is not possible on the touch oven, you can actually touch this to have as a mouse click. So this is a, a preference of mine and also worked really well. The only problem is that uh, I don't really have a large need for typing only on a very tiny device. Now this is what this device does. If you are looking to have a full-size keyboard that you can, you know, touch with all both your hands, this is the smallest device that can accomplish that, and it does it. Um, there are some things that I wish were a little bit better, like the spacebar being a little bit better. Just a few small things, but nothing that was terrible or something that couldn't be overcome. There's just a few keys that if you just having a little bit of muscle memory would fix that problem. Largely, that is good, but that type of device, uh, it's not gonna do anything for me. I don't really, I don't want a small little device that's just really good for touch tapping. Just to complete the trio, this is uh, GPD's Win 2. Now on the bottom here, you're gonna see the nylon case. This is an aftermarket case. This is not what GPD sells. This is just something that I had put on here. Now this device, the GPD Win 2, is something that I have on uh, with me at all times. I uh, commute with it all the time, uh, and I'm a big fan of it. Now this is a device that I do carry with me because largely the gaming interface and this keyboard uh, being thumb typable, it solves everything I could possibly want in a nice form factor. Now, enter the P2 Max, because we're gonna start looking at large devices because, well, we're approaching the end of silicon and things are becoming harder and harder to uh, make smaller and more powerful. Enter larger devices. Now, the P2 Max is a larger device, but it, looking at pictures, I was anticipating something that was larger. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the device itself. We'll put this over here, and here is the pocket. Two, uh, sorry, the P2 Max. We'll get that out, and this is what you will have. Let's just quickly look at what's inside the box. You have your PD cable charger. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So, output we do 5 volt, 12 volt, and 15 volt. Uh, 3 amp for 5 volt, 2.5 volt, 2.5 amp at 12 volt, and 2 amp at 15 volt. So that is 30 watt at 15 volt. What do we have here? Uh, tw yeah, 30 watt at 12 volt as well. So this is gonna be a quick charger for a lot of different devices that you could possibly wanna use. Um, what's nice about that is it's, you know, because it's USB-C and everything is, is USB-C lately, uh, you only have to carry around one charger with you. This is the manual that you'll be getting with it. Kind of just goes over really quickly and we can kind of see everything as it is, air inlet hole, air outlet. All right, we, we know what this looks like. So it's a, it's a pretty quick idea of what's going on in there. You know what, let me go ahead and leave this box back here, just because I like how it looks. Let me go ahead and move this box out of the way. Now let's take a look at the device itself. So now this is the P2 Max. Now, let me uh, put the 
the pocket two against this just so that we can start getting a size comparison for for you guys okay so now this is the pocket two this is the p2 max you can see it's it's a bit bigger but i think we can have a better demonstration if we were to compare it against uh, Apple's MacBook Pro. So this is Apple's MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is not the 15 inch, this is the 13 inch. And that's what the P2 Max looks like against the 13 inch device. And that's when you start to realize that this device, when you think about how small it is and what it can actually do, it becomes a little bit more clear on why uh, I'm starting to like this more than the Pocket 2 itself. Before we power it on, let's go ahead and just start taking a look at how nice this looks. Now this is going to be the more expensive option. This is going to be the $700 version. So you're getting to get to have this gunmetal styling, which looks really dope. And I actually, I'm actually glad that the, the premium model has the gunmetal finish versus the other way around. It used to be the silver one is the top end model and the gunmetal was the lower end model. So right in here, you can see the big inlet, and I've already done some stuff. You can also see the little webcam in here. Now, the webcam doesn't have the best performance. Um, it is 720p, but it has a pretty bad frame rate at 720p. So you have to have to lower the resolution. We'll show you that as we're going through this video. Let me go ahead and open this up, and we're going to take a look at the, the really handsome PCB of this thing. All right, so taking off this piece reveals that this bottom piece, it is made out of aluminum, nice and light. And here we can see the innards. It's been really fun looking at GPD make iterative design as they've been going along. Um, and this is just super tight. Uh, one of the things that I'm really interested in, especially for the uh, WinMax, is how well that heat pipe is going to work. And already uh, I've got a little bit of, I've already played around with this a bit, um, and it's already showing off pretty good temps. I'm actually uh, really happy with everything. Uh, additionally, we can also see that we are using the newer batteries from the newer company. You can see right there, Donggun Genfeng, right here. So this is the better battery manufacturer. And the more important bit of that is, uh, well, more important, just as important is the 35 watt hour rating that you can see for these batteries. So this is running at 7.6 volt, uh, but total battery capacity is 35 watt hour. Let's see what else we can see here. Oh, we can see what the industry, I believe, like to call a uh, zero ohm resistor. So if something looks like that needed to get fixed. Again, this is a pre-production model. This is not what you will be getting after the Indiegogo uh, campaigns, especially the retail models. Uh, so this looks like one solitary fix on there. There might be some on the other board, but largely this PCB looks super clean. Uh, so it's probably one of the more advanced down the line models uh but the one that you're going to be getting is going to have this fix already so you're not going to see this glob there uh this cable ribbon cable for the keyboard and mouse here's our wi-fi what do we have for wi-fi here we got a model Not seeing it. I want to look through this viewfinder. Oh, 7265D2W. We can look that up later. It's another ID chip. You can see the RAM on here. These are the four RAM sticks. In this, in this particular model, this is 16 gigabytes. And this little foam piece just to keep it all nice and tight. Super nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it all back together and start powering it up and taking a look. All right, so that was a look at the insides. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff. So here we can see the front firing speakers. Uh, I apparently already lost the screw. I don't know where it went. <laughs> uh, so now I only have eight screws. There's supposed to be nine in total. I'm gonna have to go and find it. Uh, so these are the two front firing speakers right in the front. Here we have our in, uh, air inlet and air outlet. On the side, we have micro HDMI, we have USB-C, which part we can also use as a dock, and two USB-A ports, and a three and a half millimeter audio jack. I'll have to do a testing and see if this is only three pole or four pole. Uh, additionally, over here, you can see that there's the charging indicator. Also, this will uh, light up to indicate it's in standby. I saw this as green as well.
So without further ado, let's go ahead and power this bad boy on. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice guy. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so let's go ahead and power this on. So there's the fingerprint reader, and it's also the power button. We're going to go into... Camera's focusing on me. Go ahead and power it on again. Hopefully, yeah, I did get to it. So this is the BIOS. We can take a quick look. And as is expected on the Pocket Series, there isn't a whole bunch of settings that we can change. Uh, we can see P2 Max 0.11 x64 project version. Here we see those two default string. Again, um, this is one thing that I do have to comment on GPD to fix as it does help, uh, especially with Linux and stuff, just being able to find these so that parameters can be set for different things. Now this little part right here, this is an interesting thing. The 8200Y is not what is going to be available on the Indiegogo. This was what was shipped to me. It was This is just a pre-production unit with an 8200Y in it. Largely, that doesn't matter, especially because the TDP that uh, G, uh, GPD sets on this device by default is at 8 watt. So at 8 watt, the 8100Y, the 8200Y, there isn't going to be a gigantic difference between those two at 8 watts. Uh, additionally, you can see that this has 16 gigs of RAM. Again, this is the higher end model, and we're running at the fastest frequency that LPDDR3 is able to get us to. So this is the BIOS. We don't really need to change anything else here. We'll quit without saving, and we'll load up into uh, Windows. We'll go into there. I'm gonna have to reposition my camera, because right now you guys are just taking a look at me. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Default specs for this uh, for the higher end model is the 8100Y, 512 gig SSD, and 16 gigs of RAM. Camera's focusing on me so hard. So that's me. So let's go ahead and we'll just lock the computer real quick. So it's like that, just so you can see the fingerprint reader in action. Fingerprint can be recognized. Boop. That went on an angle. Do it again. One more time for good luck. How about one more time? So I just caught it on an off angle right there. Of course, yeah, it's work. It's working like a charm. I had zero problem with it at all while I was using it briefly. Let me go ahead and reposition my camera for you guys. Alrighty, we're back. So very quickly, let me go ahead and show you the camera. Uh, and while it does work, that's me. It's, it's getting blown up because of all these LEDs that are going here. But you can see um how bad the frame rate is when you're using at maximum resolution on this so you're better off going ahead and setting this to uh much lower quality we'll do 320 by 240 and when we do that frame rate is improved you guys can see me hey what's going on guys uh so that's me um i largely this this little webcam that you have on here this is only going to be super useful for Type hinges, even at 320 by 240, the I can block this light just to have this come in a little bit better. Um, at 720p, I don't think that's going to be very worthwhile at the at the frame rate that it's able to hit 720p. So you're going to have to manual manually lower that whenever you're using video conferencing apps. Uh, again, this is for people that actually you know must have that. Truthfully, for me, if I'm going to be using this as a work laptop, I do require a webcam because there's a few video com web conferencing apps that my company uses and we use them quite often. So that does will come in handy. Very quickly, I'm gonna go load up Riva Tuner. We can take a look at some quick metrics on what's running under the hood and what you should anticipate because I got a, a few things running here that kind of let you guys. So in summary, real quick, just so you guys can see this we can show that it is running in dual channel you can see that right down in here so that's great for if you plan on doing any type of gaming with this uh, again this is the 8200y uh, so the only real benefit that i get out of this is slightly better frequencies on cpu but a decent bump on frequencies on the gpu again that doesn't matter at 8 watts it's not going to do anything for you especially like you can see that intel list is at 5 watt this is just not reality. That's a dream world that Intel's living in if they think this is running at five watt. It can run at five watt. 
it is not currently. The uh, power limit one is running at uh, eight watt by default that the TDP that GDP is set on this BIOS. The power limit two is 15 watt. That will only run for about 24 seconds, 20 seconds ish before that cuts off. So even then that power limit two is just for bursty type of things for when you absolutely need it. And largely in reality, the most time, that the for the most part, the only thing that you're gonna be using let me see if I can get this. Uh, the only thing you're going to be using is 8 watt frequently. Jump back in here and see if it's showing up. Let me get this up real quick. Alrighty, and we're back. So this is just a bunch of metrics that you can see really quickly. Now this is at 11 watt that you're seeing right now. This is going to start jumping down as soon as our time limit gets hit and then it's going to be stuck at 8 watt. Uh, the GPU clock, you can see that we hit 900 megahertz briefly. I have seen that go up to 950 megahertz, which is around a 12% bump over the 8100Y. There's 950 megahertz. Uh, again, that's this is only on the pre-production model. You shouldn't anticipate that to be getting what you have on the Indiegogo model that you should be receiving. And again, that doesn't matter. You can see that we're hard locked back down to 8 watt right here. And this GPU clock is never going to hit 950 megahertz again. Oh, <laughs> As I say that, uh, it is going to be super brief. It is not going to be anything that you're going to be able to really grasp of because you're going to need to jump this power wattage, this TDP, by manually overriding it and setting this to like 15 or 16 watts to actually achieve 950 megahertz on the GPU for a long time. Also, the CPU is really low. Um, so, again, the differences between the 8100Y and the 8200Y at 8 watt. There is no difference. Like 750 megahertz, the 8100Y will reach that. So largely when we're looking at this, the metrics for this will be quite similar to the 8200Y, which is what this is. But again, pre-production model. Now, right here, what you're seeing is the total system draw. So I tapped into one of the, the metrics that is available on the system and we can see the total system power. So while we're using 8.192 watt, 7.9 watt right here, this eight watt metric is for the CPU and GPU alone, nothing else, not the RAM, not the screen, not anything. So if we were to go ahead and reduce the, uh, reduce the brightness all the way, you're gonna see this number go down, right? Because we're using less power to have the backlight on the screen. But if we were to go ahead and juice it up to maximum brightness, you're going to see this go up to so you know, we're up to 15 watt, 16 watt, right? So this is uh, at, for for this point of the the quick impressions part of it. Uh, if you were to have the brightness at full and you were to not touch the TDP, you were to leave the TDP at the default that GDP leaves it at, right? You're not gonna do anything with it. If you leave it at eight watt and full brightness, we're looking at 16 watts that we're using right now. And uh, we're jumping up to 17 watts, but let's just say we average 16, let's just say we're at 16 watts, right? Um, again, the watt hour on the battery is 35 watt hour. So at a full charge, when you're playing a game and doing something that is going to be redlining the system at 8 watt, you should anticipate 2 hours of battery life at 8 watt. Now, that is only when you're gunning the system at you know full pressure, right? Because this is, again, you don't have to be running having the, the brightness at max. You can do half of that, and you can save another watt or two. Now, all of a sudden, we're at 14 watts. Now, you have 2.5 hours of battery life. You see what I mean? Um, so, again... Two hours is worst case battery life while playing a game nonstop. What battery life will look at on average, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be around three to four hours, depending on your usage. Um, if it's just regular web browsing with maximum brightness, probably around three hours. So um, again, two to four hours is battery life, what you should be anticipating for this. Now again, we've been running at an eight watt nonstop for a while here while I've been just babbling on. Notice that we've only been hitting 62 degrees Celsius on that heatsink and this inlet has been flat on the table. So it has not been, so if I just lift this up in a little bit, you will start to see the temperatures drop a little just because the air will be able to have a little bit uh, better airflow coming in. But still, despite everything, um, the temperatures on that heatsink, that little heat pipe that you saw earlier on in this video is doing work. So uh, really, this is looking really, really good. I'm loving where, what GPD has done with each iteration, and we're kind of seeing the culmination of that as we go through everything. Um, so this is just kind of power 
power profiles and what you should anticipate um, what you can see at uh, right now we're not looking at the best the top end frequency of our cpu right here for the 8100y you're looking at 2.7 gigahertz in dual core intel shows it as 3.4 gigahertz you're never going to see that because that's for single core and there is no single core to three the those cpus are going to try to bounce things around and schedule things around them you will only ever see 2.7 gigahertz on the 8100Y, which is around a 13% bump over the 7Y30 on the GPU Win 2. Anyway, let's go ahead and close this down. We're going to take a look at some keyboard tests and kind of end this quick impression video. Uh, we're running this for a little bit. I'm going to run a little bit longer. I'm going to go take a quick look at with a non-contact thermometer to see what kind of heat is on the bottom of this. Okay, I just killed the demo. Uh, you can see we're still at 60 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and look on the bottom. You can hear the fan. So this is in Fahrenheit, that's 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's extremely cool. Uh, just for people that care, here's Celsius. This is all around, right here is right where the CPU is. It's 35 degrees Celsius, 32, 30 degrees Celsius, 30. The bottom is, the bottom of this, even despite that it's aluminum, it's it's quite cool. So even at eight, eight watt TDP, uh, this thing is well balanced into not feeling warm at all. Like it's not hot. It's not uncomfortably hot at all. We're looking at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is slightly warm, but not anything that would make you uncomfortable. Uh, so let me go ahead and jump into a keyboard test. And that's going to kind of round up what our quick compressions are. Give me a second. Alrighty. So now I haven't been typing on this very much. So we're just going to jump in straight into it and see how bad or good this is actually going to wind up being. Whoop. Already I'm not really a fan of that small little comma. Whoop, these little keys. Little comma. I'm actually surprised that I hit that uh, period pretty pretty fine. I wish that de the delete key was slightly larger, but it's serviceable. Okay, what do I got? 41 word per minute. That's pretty atrocious. That's half my word score. Let's give it one more go. Whoa. Oh, Nelly, this is not already not good. Desirable, no. Whoopsie doodle about you. Now, where is hyphen? Uh, hyphen. Hyphen is in the function keys. Oh. Whoa. All right, you know what? This is. <laughs> Give me a second. All right, once again, I skipped the other one. I went again. Again, I'm at 41.72 word per minute. Um, my average is around 70, 75, uh, 80 if it's like kind of good. Uh, so I'm doing half what I'm doing right now, but I do want to kind of type on this throughout the next few days before my full review for this comes out. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, the resolution on this thing is gigantic. One thing that I do want to mention again, uh, well, again, that I've never mentioned before is that the touchpad on this is really nice. Also, it is a 16 by 10 screen. We're looking at 2560 by 1600. Um, kind of have mixed feelings on that because a lot of um, old Windows apps are going to be uber tiny. So you have to bump up the resolution scale and it's not really the best on having such a high resolution display on a small screen. Um, but for people that actually like it, you know, you can see this, this screen, it is actually super nice. We can take a look at the viewing angles. Um, it is, it's a really super nice device so far. I've only been using it literally about an hour. Um, this is just a quick look. I will be having a full review. I'll be doing some other stuff. So stay tuned. Look at my channel. As always, guys, thank you for your time. 
and thanks for watching.